Well, the next topic is, of course, about beauty and wellness and uh, how the industry is actually innovating uh, to match the changing consumer expectations. Let's go ahead and uh, with that, invite the moderator for the session. We have with us the Senior Director for CBRE South Asia. May I have uh, Ms. Sakshi Goyal on the stage, please? Thank you. Joining her, I would now like to invite uh, the other speakers as well. We have uh, Blessing A. Manikandan, who's the CEO for Tony and Guy, uh, Paulson's Beauty and Fashion Private Limited. Yes, please. Good to have you here. Please do join us on the stage. We also have Mr. Shankar Prasad, who's the founder and managing director for Plum Cosmetics. We have CK Kumaravel, who's the CEO for Natural Salon and Spa. Malika Sadani, the founder and CEO for the Moms Co. Saurabh Nanda, founder, combination and partner for Color Essence, and Kunal Gupta, CEO for Faces Canada. So, Sakshi, I'll hand it over to you, please. Over to you. Uh, hi, everybody. So, we've assembled here today to talk about uh, the evolution of the beauty and the wellness space, uh, you know, how the pandemic's affected it and, uh, you know, how it's evolving. Uh, we all know that the consumer is changing. Uh, the spending pattern is changing, the consumer needs are changing. So beauty is no longer just skin deep, uh, there's a lot more to it. And uh, with our esteemed panel today, we uh, intend to bring you some insights into how it's evolving and uh, you know, how, where it's moving towards. So when we look at some of the top trends, uh, you know, there's so much happening on the digital side of beauty, there's so much happening on the retail side of beauty marketing, uh, you know, consumer-led uh, uh, surveys, uh, you know. So let's uh, understand from each of our panelists what they think uh, they've seen change the most, uh, you know, post-pandemic in terms of trends. Uh, so over to you, Malika. Uh, you know, you run a really successful brand. And uh, how has the pandemic changed, uh, you know, the segment that you represent? and? How do you think it's evolved uh, in the last couple of years? Yeah, thanks for having me. I think to answer your question, there's a lot that has changed over the last couple of years in the skincare as a space, right? So um, just rewinding before pandemic, what, what we knew of was simple skincare. Moisturizers, face washes getting introduced, creams. I think we just went through this entire phase where people realize self-care is important. And with that came in all the insights of using personalized skincare, very strong actives, um, newer formats like face serums, face oils, you know, powders in different formats. So I think there was a lot of new formats that came in and with consumers becoming more and more conscious, there was this whole wave of very personalized skincare. Not every product is for everyone, which meant people were looking out for specific actives for specific concerns. There was too much information available online just before pandemic, so people actually used to do a lot of research online to figure out saying, what is the kind of products that will actually work for me? What are the kind of actives that will work for me? And how do I marry the two together to create my own skincare regime? You know, during the pa pandemic time, we actually saw a lot of routines getting sold, right? So it wasn't just a single product purchase. My you know, my skincare journey or my skincare routine was not just one product or two products. It evolved to about three and a half to four products per person, which was a huge development, right? And that's how I think the whole space changed to more of customization, personalization, creating your own regimes. Shankar, over to you. Uh, you know, we've seen a huge uptake in serums and, you know, you do a lot of very differentiated products. Have you seen that uh, a lot of this has changed post-pandemic or has the product uh, that was being developed changed post-pandemic? Is there anything around that that you feel has really changed or, uh, you know, the product packaging in a certain way? Sure, I think uh, a lot of it, uh, what Malika said in terms of number of products per, per session, even or per user uh, going up. I think what the pandemic also did, two major reasons why this got shaped. One is the rise of the influencer. Uh, I think influencers are having influence not just in beauty but in, even in finance, for example, which used to be a very nerdish subject. So influencers have made difficult things more easily accessible to, to a wide section of the population and that included skin care and hair care. So people's knowledge about ingredients, knowledge about regimes, knowledge about textures, products, benefits just zoomed up. Uh, over the last, uh, especially the last couple of years. This is something that was in motion, but I think it just, just got accelerated. 
Uh, that's the first thing. The second one is very interesting uh, because COVID was a sort of a sciencey thing at the end of the day. It was all biology and science and you know numbers and R value and what not people talking about. So there was a little bit of uptick in interest in science overall in the… in society. So people started believing in science, people started relating to science a lot more than something just… that just the scientists do. And they started demanding that in products also. Uh, which is where, for example, serums as a category falls in. It is very science-y. So, science became very dear to people. People have a fear of maths, people have a fear of science. I think the fear of science at least reduced, didn't go away, <laughs> but reduced. Uh, everything natural is not what people were after, they were after a lot of science. So I think these two trends put together, if you see, a lot of things then fall in place in what's happening in the… in the beauty market. CK, uh, from your perspective, how do you think the services have evolved, the services business? Uh, any major change that you see? Yeah, definitely. Good evening to everyone. Uh, the earlier, before COVID, the predominant trend was uh, a good quality product uh, combined with a good quality people. These two were the two pillars at which the customers were uh, sitting. And now the new one has come, which is now the gadgets, the machine, that is where the scientifically, how the product can be more effective, the impact of the uh, individual who is giving the pro people have reduced a bit, the science has taken over, the gadgets have taken over. I think today customers are sitting in three three-legged chair, one is the uh, product, another is the people who are giving the service and the next one is the gadgets or the equipments or the uh, all lot of things. So it is a blur which is happening. Earlier, what a derma, dermatologist is, will be doing and today uh, the salons are pushing it there and they are coming one step down and we are pushing one step up. So the line is getting blurred and that becomes a more sweet spot. Earlier, the customer used to have uh, family uh, kind of beauty products and services will be there. Now individual, everyone is demanding, the child wants their own product. So it is a… the dressing table, the bathrooms have been flooded with a lot of products. I think Shankars of the world will have a, <laughs> a very, very good time with the, with the consumption of products increasing across. And in salon also, the one thing is, uh, there is a dip in customers. I will not say 100% of customers have come back. Today we are at 80%, but the per customer spend has gone up significantly. There is a premiumization happening with the customers. They are looking for new solutions, as he says, the influencers. I used to have Karina Kapoor as a brand ambassador. Today, nobody believes that. People want <laughs> man next door, girl next door, come and use. That is the kind of influencers they are uh, able to impact a lot more on reaching to the customers is what is happening. So it's a good news overall. But we need to be alert to the changes. So the, the point is, the illiterates of the 21st century are not the ones who cannot read and write. The illiterates of the 21st century are the ones who cannot learn, unlearn and relearn. Lot of unlearning has to be happening, lot of relearning has to happen because the trends are changing so fast and we need to be alert to that. Thank you so much. I love some of those quotes. Uh, you know, Kunal, your thoughts, both the panelists have spoken about influencer marketing versus celebrity marketing. So your thoughts on that, uh, considering, you know, you guys are really focused on that. I think most of the points have already been covered between Malika, Shankar and Sir. So, look, I'll maybe give a little more perspective from a color cosmetic uh, space, right? So, I think uh, a few, few, few points, you know, the first one is I think we can say that consumers have become a little more experimental uh, during, thanks to the pandemic and, you know, thanks to the digital uh, channels like YouTube, Instagram, where the makeup consumption, not consumption, but you know, it's, it's about how these channels have actually taught consumers on how to use makeup. Um, so that has significantly gone up. Um, so, um, so in fact, it's become a business necessity to be present on these platforms and be a part of that education process as well. Uh, smaller trends like we've seen the eye category pick up significantly thanks to the masks, right? So uh, a lot of new products, new categories which were, which did not, which were not enough, uh, which were not penetrated enough uh, are now big categories. Uh, for example, uh, foundation as a category used to be uh, 
uh, used to be on low numbers in terms of penetration, but that has gone up. Uh, products like concealers, primers, the consumption of these products have gone up. So, um, so what we are seeing is the penetration of more deeper makeup products is actually has actually grown thanks to uh, uh, thanks to the digital uh, channels that educate consumers on how to use the makeup right. And the other thing is, I think the needs have become a lot more specialized versus, you know, in our times when we've, we've grown up, we've, we've had one brand, we've had mass brands which would serve everything for all kinds of customers. So now we are seeing specializations, you know, like uh, you have specialist brands that cater to very small niche audiences, for example. Uh, and thanks to the digital channels, uh, these brands are profitable, these brands, it's possible to sustain and build smaller such niche brands. Uh, where, whereas previously, when it was just offline, it would be tough to build and build such uh, niche categories. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing those insights. Saurabh, so, uh, over to you. You know, just talking about products, you've just recently launched your first store. Obviously, Color Essence has been with you. How do you feel this bundling is happening? How do you think the consumer is choosing? What are you keeping in mind when you are coming up with your formula? So basically, I've been very fortunate that uh, the journey has been from skincare. We were the owners of a brand called Nature Essence, a brand we sold a couple of years back. So uh, we were there in retail also, and we were there in salons also. So the salons, you know, were the ones who were selling bundles all their lives, you know, and uh, that has now been predominantly been taken over by the D2C brands. And retail was always, always very uh, massy kind of products few products, but in quantum you were placing it. And 90% of times the big brands like the Levers used to totally uh, plunder the space, you know, in the shelf space, the brands like us used to struggle. So we found our niche in the salons earlier. And uh, then, you know, as the name uh, became popular from salons into retail, then we started getting some trickle of space there. But retail is all about masses and there is no niche, there is no space for niches. Fortunately, with the, you know, the internet booming so much and the uh, after COVID era, every niche today has become a mass, you know, and that has uh, made way for so many new categories that the, the field is wide open. There is so much for so everyone and the amount of money which is getting pumped into the entire ecosystem. I think the industry should move from a 60, 70,000 crore industry to a good one lakh crore industry in the next two to three years, you know, so it's really exciting times. And for us, uh, uh, retail combination is the, the next lever, the next uh, stage from being a skincare brand to a makeup brand, now to be a retailer. And uh, we come from that school of thought where we say that whatever you want to consume, you be a reseller for that also. So like uh, in combination also, we will also be having multiple of our own brands. So we want to sell that space and, you know, products of multiple brands, 80, 90 brands, uh, the top ones, uh, in the physical space and 1,000 plus brands in the online format and have some space from the margins we make from the, the you know, the top brands like uh, Momsco and uh, Plum. You know, they are like absolute darlings of our today's generation and find some niches for our own self also. So it's it's exciting time for all of us. Thank you. Uh, blessing over to you. Your thoughts on uh, niche, you know, when, when Saurabh said retails, uh, his retail is not, it's very massy, it's a lot of people. I would feel a, a chain that you represent is a very niche uh, brand in its uh, way and it stands for quality. So do you also feel like uh, there's been any change in the consumer behavior in the last two years in a certain way about, uh, you know, uh, how they've sel selected services or how they've selected products, etc.? Uh, thank God, actually, we are, uh, no, like, good in cutting the hair, mm -hmm. and, no, uh, uh, there's no technology can replace, you know, the expert of the hairstylist. So, what people know, we complicate this business, and we offer a lot of products and services, but what a consumer need is a perfect haircut, and a perfect color, and a perfect makeup. Rest, everything is a feel-good factor. Sure. And now maybe your nail is very, you know, like uh, visible and uh, it shows off. You need a perfect nail extension or a, a paint or a arch. I hope women agree with this. Uh -huh. Apart from that, we need a perfect 
beautician who can able to do a perfect threading. If you pick, pick extra hair, then you're gone. And uh, they need a perfect cut and file. But apart from that, what uh, we have noticed is actually men is spending more than women. So 70% business is coming from hair and uh, you are almost 60% business is coming from men now. So men is stocking more product. If you take my uh, travel kit, actually like uh, it is bigger than my wife's, uh, no like uh, product, product kit. So I have beard wash to beard oil to everything. Actually. So there is a lot of change uh, from the men's side. I see that no men is spending more and uh, women, they want a perfect haircut perfect trimming and uh, your perfect cut and file. Rest everything, actually the beauty has gone from saloon to your uh, D2C products because the COVID has given them enough time to do all the research and beauty is now, uh, I think, uh, uh, as Kumaravil sir was mentioning that, a lot of gadgets, you know, very, uh, people are very particular about what product we use, what gadget we use, uh, how we differentiate from uh, the old way of doing uh, the beauty part and makeup. You no, know, like uh, nowadays, if someone knows makeup, they become a freelancer or they open your, their studio. So that's how, you know, like uh, the business knows, like uh, if you want to, you know, like uh, uh, get married, people know, you know, like uh, they don't call Tony and Guy, they uh, go to Instagram and, you know, check who is the best trending makeup artist. Makeup artist. Yeah, that's how the business is happening. So in between, actually, there's a lot of uh, no, like news and investment in D2C. So there's a lot of fun. <laughs> no, we completely agree with you about uh, how it all pans out. Malika, just, uh, you know, on the same note, he said uh, women these days are very concerned about what goes into their uh, products. You know, so are you seeing that uh, there's a lot of focus, obviously, on environment consciousness, on sustainability? So. Where do you stand with that when it comes to your brand? What do you see happening in that space? Like, you know, Body Shop started doing these uh, refilling stations. Uh, you know, L'Oreal started introducing uh, paper packaging. So, uh, your thoughts on that? So, I think it's a very interesting question. And, you know, I'll just rewind about three and a half, four years back. And so, our brand is about six years old now. And it was about three and a half years back when I got a call from the warehouse saying, Madam, you have a parcel aaya hai. So I said, okay, office, bhejo aado. And it came to the office. Uh, so when I received it in the office, it was actually a box, a mom's course carton, that's a shipment box. It came inside, with that were empty bottles and with a handwritten note, right? So someone actually put in all the effort of doing all this work to send the product back saying, love the products. Can you please do something about how, uh, can you do something about sustainability, not really packaging, right? So. Um, and that was when, you know, we went back to the drawing board to figure out saying that the consumer of tomorrow is going to be extremely conscious of what you do. And what is the waste that we're leaving behind? And which is why it's extremely important for all brands now to start focusing on, you know, how do they nullify the impact of plastic or carbon or anything that ha they have during the course of the period of time. And we're also moving to a place where brands have a character. You know, and I always say brands have that character, which is what people talk about the brand when the brand is not in their face, which is when you're not in the room. And in all these conversations, surprisingly, this bit of being eco-friendly is being a part of it, right? So it may not be a reason why a consumer would still buy the brand, but it is one of the important considerations in making the choice, which is why I think it's becoming extremely important. And honestly, you know, I've got two daughters. My older one is now 11. And... She insists on having a separate dustbin for, you know, green plastic and non-green plastic and electricals and all of that. So we actually have to build it. So the generation of tomorrow is extremely conscious. And if we don't evolve and create solutions for them, we're going to be very irrelevant for them. So it make, it's become extremely important for brands to adopt all of that. Uh, completely valid. Shankar, your thoughts on that means... Uh, how do you see that, uh, you know, impacting our business or changing packaging or the product uh, sure. per se? I'll keep it very short because Malika has beautifully covered the core issue. Just two things we need to remember. One is what is inevitable that we have to do. Uh, and I think as businesses, we have the responsibility 
that whether or not people ask for it, we have to push for it because we can, we can say consumers are not asking, so I am not giving, consumers say businesses are not giving, so something has to break this. So I think at some level, more and more businesses are realizing thankfully that we have to do something and it's a journey, you can't do everything overnight, uh, that's the first bit. Secondly, uh, when it comes to sustainability, the higher income groups tend to have slightly higher awareness. Uh, as you go slightly down into the mass segment, uh, it is still a very uh, value conscious uh, India as a market overall is value conscious, but I think it gets very value conscious as you go down into mass. So there it is tough to give sustainable solutions. Somewhere the ecosystem has to develop where sustainability and cost effectiveness can coexist. Today most sustainable, organic, etc. things are always more expensive or more cumbersome than the default option. So somewhere if that changes, then we will see this tipping point happen. So Kunal, your thoughts on, uh, you know, sustainability in, uh, say, makeup, is there any trends that you're seeing uh, in that? Is there any movement towards that? We hear about a lot of, uh, you know, companies doing small farm batches, etc. But anything in the makeup segment that you feel uh, that's, there's a movement? No, so look, I think in terms of sustainability, uh, I think uh, I think what we just spoke of now, are, I think that these are very important points. Uh, the challenge always is that India is a value-seeking uh, market. So then how do you satisfy the consumer while, and also push for uh, driving a preference change for consumers so that they themselves move towards more sustainable solutions, right? Um, I think there's also one more school of thought which is, uh, can the cost to the environment be built into the PNL, right? Yeah. Uh, through the necessary regulatory changes, etc. Uh, because if that happens, then uh, I mean everybody has to comply, uh, and I'm I'm sure we are getting there, right? The single the the single use plastic, uh, the regulations there I think are uh, a step in that direction. So I think there's work there. Uh, in terms of cosmetics, I think cosmetics has seen a long uh, journey towards sustainability, clean and cruelty-free products. Uh, the good part is that, the good news is that a large part of the cosmetics is third-party manufactured even today. And a uh, lot of these organizations uh, are actually actively working for and towards sustainable and clean beauty solutions. Um, so for us as a brand, I think we just have to make sure that we partner with the right uh, manufacturers uh, and uh, make a dent towards moving towards sustainable solutions. Perfect. Thank you. I think just before we wrap up, uh, Kunal, we'll start with you. One top trend for you to watch out for uh, in 2022 uh, in the beauty space. Anything that you think is happening which is really exciting? So I think uh, lip tints and lip plums is something uh, I would say to observe, is something to be observed uh, and uh, watched for. Saurav? I think uh, the men are coming with a vengeance. We have rock stars <laughs> from the Tony and Guy family and I am an absolute fan of his, uh, you know, look and feel. So I'm getting my autograph uh, book. So I think men will be giving a serious challenge to the women consumers also. And we as cosmetic people, we are always uh, closed and biased towards the women. But men are turning out to be very discerning uh, consumers. Oh, blessing. So now actually most of the uh, business for a saloon comes from your uh, character treatment. No, now, now people are talking about Botox. And no, people are coming with multi, a combination of everything, no, like a single product, a savior for your hair. No, a lot of uh, new products in this space, in the hair. And uh, when it takes, uh, when it comes to the eyebrows, a lot of microblading uh, stuff is happening and your uh, lip, you no know, tattooing. Uh, so people are smoking a lot. So they want a permanent uh, uh, makeover for the lips. And uh, when, it, uh, when you take a... Um, uh, the nail part, nail is you no know, like uh, it's becoming a separate business model, model itself. Right? Like nail bars, you no know, nail extensions, and you no know, nail art is becoming uh, very big. And uh, especially in men's space, there's a lot of products, and still there is a lot of scope, and uh, to come out with a lot of products, uh, we can give a lot of insights. And uh, there is a lot of saloons 
coming up exclusively for men like your true fit and hill and you no know, like uh, you, you can see like uh, dozens of brand has uh, you no know, like started their uh, men's exclusive salon the barb old barber shop uh, a glorified barber shop is coming in full fledged yeah to pamper that, the men that's extremely interesting and very encouraging for all the men folk sitting here malika so i think uh, minimalism will come back to skin care uh, lots of which would mean that a lot of brands will have to make really effective products and the second trend that i see really coming is the use of uh, skin care ingredients in hair care that's another trend that i am predicting actually <laughs> so over to you yeah for the older people it is the anti aging uh, i think that is a big opportunity which is emerging because people at 60 also now feel they are not old the age the with the life expectancy expectancy going up i think that segment is going stretching and it is going far there on the other end of the spectrum we have the children the gen z people making a very decision and they are very wanting to express themselves on their own terms i think the uh, salon opportunity every small segment can today be uh, converted to a business opportunity by itself there can be future will have uh, 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 teenage salon kids salon um, uh, i think people above 60 i think you can split it in age wise you can split gender wise you can split um, hair skin you can split in every possible way and each one with 140 crore people i think enough and more for everybody in this thank you uh, shankar last uh, yes. words from you i think i'll keep it very brief times up so uh, i i'd like to take a channel view i think the an idea whose time has come as omni channel uh, there have been various attempts at sort of integrating data across channels online offline exclusive retail whatever i think businesses will try to own the customer in a way and i think omni channel is a way to get there uh, my prediction is we'll see more technology happening there thank you so much uh, my own prediction is uh, a lot of multi brand beauty channels i do think uh, that there are enough and more players in that space who are bringing some really good brands to the country curating some really good brands and the experiences that we will see in the next one or two years will be something to watch out for so thank you so much uh, everybody for all the wonderful insights thank you so much <laughs>